Last time I solved Matt Parker's Wordle puzzle in 30 seconds, and in the meantime I optimized it down to just three seconds. And in fact, the last, the tenth solution, which happened to be a Matt Parker solution, is found in just above two seconds. Okay, so how did I do that? Remember that removing the anagrams, how did we do that? So first we sorted the words and then we removed the distinct neighbors. And after removing the distinct neighbors, of course, the rest of the words are still sorted, right? So <laughs> neighbors should look quite similar. Okay, and then we started i at index zero, and then we started j at index i plus one, and later k at j plus one, and so on. And I thought, well, how likely is it that these initial neighbors will have no characters in common? That should be pretty unlikely, right? And in fact, there are just four of those neighbors. Here they are. The first one at the transition from E to D. So dusty is the first word with a D. Then the transition from D to C. Curvy is the first word with a C. Then C to B and then B to A. Okay, so in all other cases, I could have started with more than I plus one or J plus one and so on. Okay, but let's stick with the first example. So we start with the very first word rusty and we ask how much do we have to go down this list to find a word that doesn't include any of the characters of Rusty? And that's, you can see the words are here quite similar. So uh, let me just simply scroll down. O, N, M, R, K, L. Oh, here's the K. Yeah. So Plunk still shares the U with Rusty. And then Plonk is the first word that doesn't share any characters. And hopefully uh, this pattern continues down the line. So if we start at zero, we can skip to 182 and what if we start at one or two or three we could simply compute that as a lookup table and that's exactly what i did here here's the 182 from from just now and then if you start at word one you have to skip 120 words if you start at word two you have to skip 116 and so on and these are um, quite big numbers so you can save a couple hundred uh, first steps for every of those um, four internal iterations or nested iterations Okay, so you, yeah, it doesn't appear there are some interesting patterns here, but if we scroll at the very bottom, then we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. So the one means you have to skip one to the right where there are no more words. The two means you have to skip two to the right. Three means three to the right. So basically, as soon as you enter this territory, there are no more words um, that share no characters that are intersection-free. And why is that? So let's see how long does this pattern continue. It continues for quite a while and here it stops. So the last two, uh, 2081 words um, have no successors that don't intersect. So maybe let's look at those words starting here from the one, starting from this pair. And you already know this pair. So this is Sabbath and Tways. You saw that in the <laughs> Rusty Plonk file. That was the very last transition from B to A. So um, as soon as we are here, we are in the A territory. And no matter how much I scroll down, all the words will include an A. Maybe let me scroll down here. You can see it. <laughs> that looks quite hypnotizing. So you won't find any successors um, with no intersection because all of them include an A, right? Okay, that's why the numbers um, starting from about 3000 are quite huge and bring the average to about 500 something. Okay, yeah, so basically we can simply compute this table and then use this table and that's exactly what I did. Uh, first, let me show you the computation. So a good old for loop, we loop through all the numbers uh, from zero to the end for i, and then we loop through all the neighbors starting again uh, with the first one to the right because we can't know how much we can skip yet. We have to compute it. And then as soon as we find um, a pair that doesn't intersect at all, we break out of the for loop and then we can store the difference in our table. And that's exactly how the numbers were computed that you saw in the first step text file. Okay. And then the next difference is, let's look at the old code again. So here we started with i plus one, j plus one, k plus one, and so on. And then here in the new version, we start with a plus first step of i, and then j plus first step of j. And um, similarly for k plus first step of k and a plus first step of l. And 
for all these um, nested iterations, we can save a couple hundred initial steps. And that adds up to quite a bit. Now we are 10 times faster. So let me know how much you can, or how fast the three, three seconds are on your computer. I would guess maybe about two seconds if you have a somewhat modern computer. And I would hope that the last solution is found in maybe just under a second or maybe even below one second. That would be quite cool. So let me know in the comment section below. I quite enjoyed reading the comments for the previous video.